Hi guys, welcome back to our channel, the number one place for people who love design, art and all things creative. You are watching Dantier and Bollock's channel, my name is Laszlo, and today I'm going to show you how you can do a little bit of 3D interior design work using nothing but Adobe Illustrator. Which sounds a bit crazy, I know, but we'll talk about that later. What you need to know for now is the latest version of Adobe Illustrator 2022 added a few very interesting 3D effects onto its toolkit, which I thought, with a little bit of creativity, we can utilize to set up a very simple three-dimensional interior space, even if you have never done any 3D work before. As long as you have a basic, basic understanding of how Illustrator works, you can do this. Okay? Come, I'll show you how. Instead of the beginning, let's start at the very end. This is what we are going to put together. A little living room interior setup, which looks quite complex when you look at it as a whole, but once you break the scene down to its own individual objects, it's actually not much more than a bunch of simple rectangles and circles. Okay? So let's open up Illustrator and start designing this big sofa. As I said, we are going to make most of these with basic rectangles, so I'm just gonna drag one out with this rectangle tool, we don't need the stroke, we just want a solid color feel for now. I'm just setting mine to a simple grey color. And then once you went up to window and opened up the 3D and materials box, you can just click on the extrude effect. This basically elongates or shape onto this imaginary 3D sphere. In terms of view, I'm just gonna set this and most of my other following shapes to the off-axis front view to have this basic isometric composition. All I do here is I toggle this side scroll to modify my extrusion levels until I get something that resembles the side bits of a sofa. Besides this, since all this 3D is just an effect on top of a basic shape, we can always select our rectangle points with the selection tool and modify them, elongate the sides, grabbing the corner points and whatnot, and the applied 3D effect will change on your shape in real time, which is quite impressive, I gotta give that to Adobe. Now all of these edges on our shape are quite harsh, so I want to smoothen things out a little bit for a nicer, softer furnishing effect, right? For that I do two things. First of all, I just manually add curved edges to my rectangle by dragging all corners simultaneously with my selection tool. And then I go back to my 3D settings and activate the bevel function. I switch this to a round bevel and make sure that it doesn't repeat, I just want one smoothened edge effect, yeah? Now once this is done, I am going to create another rectangle, but this time I drag out a shorter and wider one, because this is going to be the base for our sofa cushion. I extrude this one as well in the 3D window, then I add my bevels, making sure it has the exact same settings as the side piece did. Now I'm basically just eyeballing the level of extrusion and the placement of this cushion in relation to my side piece. Naturally this object has to be behind the previous one, so I do a right click and I send it to the back in the arrangement settings. Once it's lined up nicely, I'm just gonna duplicate my cushion, put that in place, then duplicate again, and this third one I'm going to extrude a little bit more, because I want to design one of those big L-shaped sofas to make this a little bit more interesting. Once it's done, I just toggle things with my arrow keys really, to put all of this in place. Then of course, I'm gonna duplicate the side piece too. Put this to the back and add it to the edge of my big piece, on the right here, and align it with everything. After that, I need to add the back pieces as well. For that, of course, another rectangle is needed, this time a nice and big one, that is not thinned out on either side. Now we extrude this, of course, and manually adjust it until it fits the rest of our composition here. Of course, we need to put this onto the back, give it the same bevel settings that we added to everything before and duplicate it two times. And once they are put into place, we get the basic skeleton of our sofa. Now once that is done, I thought for that extra level of visual interest I'm going to create base pieces to put under my cushions as well, by making two very long and thin rectangles, with the exact same settings as all these other bits of course.
the left bit under the smaller cushions need to be a bit wider and the right one smaller but more extruded in order to make our composition well, maybe not hyper realistic but at least believable. After that, all that's left to do is adding some actual legs to the sofa. For that, I'm going to create another small long rectangle, but instead of extruding it onto a 3D space, I'm going to use this other 3D function called Revolve, which, as the name suggests, turns your object onto a cylinder shape by revolving it 360 degrees around itself. We can change the color of this if we want to, and like always, I manually adjust the sides to make it a bit thinner. Then I put this and a couple duplicates of this onto the corners, and that's that. This is our basic sofa composition done. Now, so far so good, I hope. We haven't done anything too advanced just yet, so I hope you're all still following along. Up until this point, all of this could have been done in previous versions of Adobe Illustrator as well, if needed be. But things get a little bit more interesting once we switch our 3D window to this material section, as well as trying out the revolve, the inflate, the rendering, and all these other new 3D Illustrator functions. Now that we have our basic sofa, I'm going to switch to the materials panel, because well, this is a thing now that Illustrator can do. We can select our 3D object and choose a texture or material to add on top of it. For the sofa, I'm selecting this one called Oxford Fabric. Give the program a second to take action and once the material is applied, we get to mess with it a little bit. If you scroll down to its settings, we can change the colors of it for example, or the scale and size of the effect until we see something we actually like. Unfortunately, the same effect cannot be applied to grouped objects, so once I'm happy with my setup, I have to add this material to all my bits, all my little sofa cushions one by one, which of course is super tedious work, and we can only hope that this is something that, with time, Adobe will improve on. Now, that is our main bit of furniture done, so now we get to move on to designing some smaller items to fill up our room with. First of all, I want to design some cushions to put on top of this sofa. For this, I'm going to drag out a perfect square by holding down shift while using the rectangle tool. And then, to make it 3D, I'm going to use the inflate tool here instead of our trustworthy extrusion or revolve tools to kind of puff up this shape a little bit. I inflated the shape on both sides, which you can check once you start rotating the object. And here with this volume slider you get to determine how much of this inflating effect you wanna have on your object. For our pillow we don't need this to be that extreme, so I toned it down a bit. Now, this cushion looks a bit too angular, a bit too perfect at the moment, so I'm going to... So I'm gonna go up to the effects, open up the pucker and bloat tool and give it an ever so slight puckering effect. See, for me, this is more of an organic cushion shape, which I can work with. And now what I want to do is put this in place, which is going to be in this corner of the sofa, and instead of using a view preset, I'm just going to manually rotate the object, with either the angle sliders here, or by hovering over the shape with my mouse and rotate it around by hand until it looks like it's in the right perspective. Naturally, just like we did with the sofa, we get to add a nice material on top here too. I went with the circle stitch material, changed the color, then I just duplicate my finished cushion a couple of times and scatter them around this sofa. Once that is done, I thought we could add a nice little glass coffee table onto the front. For that, what I'm going to do first is put some crossed legs down on which the tabletop will rest. You guessed it, this is going to be built on thin and tall rectangles, which we will extrude to get the middle piece. Extrude it quite a bit, as this is going to go through the whole table. Modify its points by hand, of course. Then what you do is copy this shape and elongate it onto the side by holding down shift with two side points selected to create this wider rectangle. 
Then of course we need to go back to the extrusion settings and make this really thin, maybe around 10-15 pixels, until it feels like the same width as this other middle bit. This one I'm going to put in front of the previous panel, then I duplicate it and I put the duplicates behind the original long panel and line it up with the previous one until the whole thing looks like it's perfectly aligned across. To create this illusion that these two smaller bits are actually joining up. Material wise there are a couple nice wooden looking ones in this library, so feel free to experiment. I'm going with this one called natural chestnut wood. Apply this to all three of your pieces, then the legs are done. As for the tabletop, I thought instead of making everything so angular, I'm going to use the ellipse tool this time to create a nice circular table. I'm drawing one out, extrude it as we do quite thinly, then manually rotate and adjust it to the right angle. I'm using a very neutral looking color for this piece and also taking down the object's opacity, which not only helps with putting this perfectly on top of my legs, but also creates that see-through glass-like effect I'm looking for. Now we're really getting somewhere, so I thought as the last step I would show you how to create a couple more intricate objects for this living room, and also once you are done with everything, how you can render your objects. At this point I started getting quite confident around these tools, so I thought let's challenge ourselves and make something more complex, like a book. Which is actually very simple, all we need to do is create two rectangles, a big one, which will be the cover, and a smaller off-white one, which will be the pages. We need to overlay this onto the left side a little bit so the pages will show on the side. We can also subtract a little ellipse from here with the shape builder tool to create that nice little curve our pages would have. Now once we group these two shapes we can extrude them to get that nice book shape. It's pretty clever, isn't it? This is the best use I have found for our extrusion tool so far, after which I thought let's make the most of the revolve tool as well. Just like we did for the legs of our sofa, if you draw out a rectangle but then you bring in some of these points to the side to create a bit of a trapezoid shape, the revolving function will help you to design curvier, more organic looking objects this way, like glasses, cups or vases. It kind of works like the way a potter's wheel would work for pottery. And once you realize this, you can push this function to the absolute limits like I did and combine maybe a circle with rectangles to create a simple two-dimensional light bulb, which then you can revolve. Or do a half circle, which often manually messing with could be a lampshade. I thought it would be pretty cool to have a nice bee extending lamp on the side. Like this. So once I had these main elements, I just made a big frame by using the pen tool. You literally just lay down four points like this, blow up the stroke size a little bit, then you can extrude to get the right perspective for this bodywork for the frame. I switched to a lighter color to get more realistic shadings and also brought in these straight angles with the direct selection tool to make the whole thing a bit curvier so it flows better, yeah? See, all it takes is a little bit of creativity. Then you can interior design yourself to the point where things are actually starting to look like a nice and cozy room. Now before you go and start exploring things for yourself, the last thing you need to know how to do is render your finished objects. This can only be done to individual objects at a time. So here I'm ungrouping this little footstool for example, then I go to the right side of this 3D and materials window. I drop this little square thing down, then I turn on ray tracing. I put the settings to high, then all you do is click render. You give your computer a moment or two to do the job, and then you're done. Now repeat it to all of your objects. As I said, this can be applied to groups, which is one of the many, many limitations of this quote-unquote fake 3D functions within Adobe Illustrator. You can't move complex objects around in this 3D space if it's made of groups, because all your objects will do is they will start revolving around themselves individually. There is a lot of illogical decisions surrounding this 3D tool. A lot of clumsiness, which makes me ask the question, what is the point? 
Who is this for, really? I mean, if you push yourself and work your way around these problems, you can create nice enough looking things like I did here, but... Actual 3D designers like Jacqueline would think that these functions are way too limiting, Illustrator is overcomplicating things, and from certain aspects it's downright laughable when you put it next to proper 3D applications like Blender or Cinema 4D. And people like me, whose main focus is 2D design, are we going to use this? Uh, I don't know, maybe. Feel free to let me know if you have found a good way to build these functions onto your proper design workflow. And I'm not just being cynical here, I am genuinely curious what people will use this thing for, okay? Now, if you're a regular Creative Crew member, you know that this video was kind of that sweet spot in terms of our content, because we talk a lot about illustration, graphic design, architecture and interior design in this channel. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Feel free to leave a like to help us reach even more people on this channel. And I hope to see you next time with some other cool creative stuff, yeah? Until then, see ya!